Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It is a brand new year, 2021, and this is my first video for the year. I haven't started any, or I haven't made any New Year's resolutions as yet. I do have to sit down and think about my expenses since I am expected to start back paying my student loans, so a lot of things have to change. However, there's one thing that I had planned for this year that I'm keeping, and basically what I'll be doing, I'll be showing you how to invest $100 five different ways. So what I'm going to do this year, I'm going to conduct an experiment where I'm going to use dollar cost averaging where every single month around the first of the month, I will be investing $500, but in five different accounts and each account will be $100. So at the end of the year for each account, I will have invested $1,200 in each account. But what I want to do, I want to see how the different accounts behave. I am going to use five different recommended financial strategies for investing in stocks and see how they behave. And every single month I will be reporting um, these to you. So for example, how they grow, any income that I earn from them and so forth. Five accounts, $100, $1,200 invested in each account at the end of the year. And all of the only thing that I'll be investing on in these accounts are index funds. I am not going to invest in any individual stocks for any of these accounts. The first investment strategy I'll be using is the 110% rule. I did a video on this previously. I will leave a link to the, it in the description below, but I will go over it in this um, video as well. The next investment strategy I will be using is sector allocation. And in my second account, I will be allocating funds or breaking up that $100 into different sectors as recommended by Fidelity. The next account I'll be opening, so the third account that I'll be opening, I will be using Warren Buffett's recommendation, which is to simply invest in a S&P 500 index fund. In the fourth account that I'll be opening, I will be investing solely in dividends, so I will be using um, dividend ETFs. And in the fifth account that I'll be opening, I will be using Dave Swanson's recommendation for asset allocation, and I will go over that in more detail. So I will be, again, I will be opening five accounts. In each account, I will only be using index funds or ETFs, and I will be breaking up that hundred dollars in each account so that I get the maximum diversification as possible. So remember, I am not a financial advisor. Anything that I do in this video is for information purposes only. And remember, this is my experiment. This is what I'll be doing throughout 2021. Okay, so up next, I'm going to explain each account and the exact amount I'll be allocating monthly. Okay, so in my first account, I'm going to be using the 110% rule. The 110% rule is a formula that tells you how much money you will allocate in stocks and how much you will allocate in bonds. I am using two ETFs for this, one for stocks and one for bonds. This formula uses your age to determine these allocations for stocks and bonds. So the first thing you want to do is subtract your age from 110%. Since I'm 42 years, I'm going to subtract 42 from 110, which gives me 68%. The next thing that I will do is invest this amount in dollars and I'm going to invest it into my stock ETF. So since I had 68%, I'm going to invest $68 in stocks. Once I determine that amount, I'm going to take the rest of money and invest it in bonds. So since I'm investing $100, I am going to invest 100% or minus 68%, which is equal to 32%, which equates to $32 when I invest that amount in bonds. So my allocation will be $68 in stocks and $32 in bonds. So if you notice from this chart, I am investing the majority of my, that's $100 into stocks and the rest in bonds. For stocks, I'm gonna use the ETF FZROX. And for bonds, I'm going to use BND. FZROX is from Fidelity and BND is from Vanguard. I can do both 
of them in my um, Fidelity account. So I'm going to invest $68 in FCROX and BND, I'm going to invest $32. So the main thing that you want to take away from this formula is that you make calculations based on your age. So you are using your age to make the cal calculation. If you're 32 years old, your stock allocation will be different from mine because my age may be different to, from yours. So in my second account, I'm going to be using sector allocation. There are 11 sectors and I'm going to purchase 11 ETFs for these sectors. So I'm going to invest 27% in information technology. For information technology, you can think of companies like Apple, um, IBM and so forth. Um, consumer discretionary, I'm going to invest 12%. Communication services, I am going to invest 10%. So for consumer discretionary, these are things that you don't really need, but nice to have. So for example, Tesla would be an example of a consumer uh, discretionary stock. For communication services, think of like internet and telephone. So at and would be an example of a communication services stock. For energy, I'm going to invest 2%. Energy, you can think of oil, gas. Uh, healthcare, think of pharmacies, and that's going to be 14%. Consumer staples, these are things that people will buy on a daily basis. I will be investing 6%. For utilities, uh, lights, I will be investing 3%. Materials, 3%. Think of gold, silver, and so forth. And financials, I'm going to be investing 11%. An advantage of sector allocation is that when one sector performs poorly, another sector will perform really well so that you get a balance of your account so that not everything will perform negatively at one time. And changing these percents to dollars, this would equate to in dollars, I will be investing $27 in the FTEC ETF, $12 in the FDIS ETF, um, for real estate, I'm going to be investing $3 in FREL ETF. For communication services, FCOM $10. Industrials, I'm using the ETF FIDU, which is $9. For energy, I'm going to be investing in FENY, which is $2. Healthcare, FHLC ETF, which is $14. FSTA, which is a consumer staples um, ETF for $6. Utilities, FSUTX, I'm going to invest $3. FMAT, which is materials ETF, that's going to be $3. And the financial ETF, FNCL, I'm going to invest $11. All of these are five um, ETFs from Fidelity and, and I use Fidelity because they are generally low cost ETFs. So account three is pretty simple. I'm just going to be investing one ETF in an S&P 500 fund. So I'm going to invest the entire $100 into that one ETF. And that ETF that I'm going to be investing is ticker symbol VOO or VU. And it is Vanguard's S&P 500 ETF and I'm investing again $100. This is Warren Buffett's recommendation that everyone should invest in a simple S&P 500 ETF. So this is it. For the fourth account, I'll be using a dividend investing approach, but instead of buying individual stocks, I'll be using two ETFs and I'm splitting that $100 I'm investing into just two of the ETFs. And I'm gonna be using high yield Div paying dividend ETFs um, by Vanguard. One is VYM and the other is VYMI. VYM is a ETF that has a bunch of US stocks that pays high yield dividends and VYMI has a bunch of international stocks. I'm going to invest 85% in VYM and 15% in VYMI. VYM has a dividend yield of 3.25% at the time of recording, whereas VYMI has a dividend yield of 3.17%. So the good thing about these is that any growth that you, any growth that the individual stocks in this ETF has, 
you get that growth as well as any dividend payments that are paid out from it. So just remember, because I'm using $100 and I'm investing 85%, $85 will go to VYM and $15 will go to VYMI. For my fifth account, I'm going to be using asset allocation using the Dave Swanson method. And I'm going to be spreading this $100 across six assets allocations and purchasing eight ETFs. According to Dave Swanson, to build a robust portfolio, at one point in time, whenever you're allocating money, 30% of that money should go towards the total stock market. And this would be across the US stocks. 15% um, would be for international stocks. And you want to think of um, international stocks from developed countries like Canada. 5% in emerging markets. Emerging markets would be companies or stocks from China and India. 15% in government bonds. Another 15% in treasury inflation protected securities bonds. So in all, you are allocating 30% of your money towards bonds. And the last asset is REITs or Real Estate Investment Trust, and you're going to allocate 20%. I have an entire video on REITs, so you can check the description below for that video. So I'm going to be breaking up my $100 and purchase $30 in the in a total stock market ETF, $15 in an international stock ETF, $5 towards an emerging markets ETF, $15 towards a government bonds ETF, $15 towards a TIPS EPF, ETF, and $20 towards a REIT ETF. Note for the government bonds, I'm going to be breaking them up into long-term bonds, short-term bonds, and intermediate bonds. So for the total stock market ETF, I'm going to be purchasing ticker symbol FNILX, which is a ETF from Fidelity. I'm going to be purchasing $30 in this stock, $15 in FCILX, and again, this is an international ETF stock from Fidelity. For emerging markets, I'm going to be purchasing $5 towards FPADX. And then I'm going to be purchasing $15 to in bonds, short-term bonds, long-term bonds, and intermediate bonds. So I'm going to be allocating $5 towards FUMBX. $5 towards FUAMX, $5 towards FNBGX, and then I'm going to be allocating $15 towards TIPS. The, the ETF would be FIPDX, and lastly, $20 towards REITs using Vanguard's um, REIT ETF VNQ. All these ETFs, with the exception of Vanguard's VNQ or Vanguard's Real Estate ETF, are Fidelity ETFs. And I prefer these ETFs because their expense ratios are quite low in comparison to all the other um, comparable ETFs for these asset classes. I'll be using dollar cost averaging, where over the span of 12 months, I will be investing $100 each month in each of the five accounts. Okay, so in total, I will be investing $500 a month, but I will be reporting on each of the five accounts separately. I hope that I hope that makes sense. I really hope that you enjoyed this video today. Please give me a thumbs up. If you enjoy this, like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.